Hey everybody, just wanted to do a quick update video on what we've been doing with our simulation subsystem behind the scenes. So we've been slowly moving a lot of the hard-coded logic into a new schema-based system that allows us to create uh, essentially blueprints of components and uh, use that for the electrical simulation, the pneumatic simulation, hydraulic, etc. I wanted to take you through that really quickly and show it off and how it works in the game. And uh, just for background, for those who haven't been following for very long, this simulation will run on our compute nodes. So we have servers in a data center, which run the main vehicles, such as a U-boat. All of these simulation systems run at uh, extremely fast iteration times. So they may do up to 2000 uh, sort of processing loops per second on the server. And then the server sends over sort of the final numbers after they've been crunched to the clients. So when you look at a gauge and you see, for instance, the, the pressure of a particular, you know, air starting flask, for instance, that's actually being calculated on the server and then being sent out to everybody connected to the MMO. Uh, there's some benefits, a uh, few drawbacks to this, but this is the architecture that, that we've chosen. So today we're going to look at one of the pneumatic uh, diagrams that we have here, and then we'll see how it works in game and how it affects the, the different components inside of the game. So right now we are looking at the very high level representation of the U-boat. We have different compartments such as the E-room, diesel room. We have doors in between them, and we also have intake pipes. We have a representation of the outside world, and all of these different volumes have a few items associated with them. They have a certain number of moles. So this is a unit of measurement of a particular type of gas. They have different moles of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and argon. Right now we set it up to represent ambient air, but in the future the idea is that as a human inhales inside of the diesel compartment, for instance, they're slowly swapping out moles of oxygen, nitrogen, etc. for more carbon dioxide and so on. This is how we'll be able to get to that level of simulation that we're hoping to achieve, where if you're diving and you're under too long, you're slowly creating more carbon uh, by exchanging that, again, uh, the other elements. The pressure itself, whether it's PSI or atmospheres, is um, calculated using the ideal gas law. So we're looking at a particular volume, we're looking at the number of moles of gases inside of those volumes. We're also looking at the temperature. All of those affect the pressure. So the pressure there is ultimately uh, sort of a calculation based on everything else. And in order to make this actually interesting and do anything, we have valves. So valves can either be doors, they could be pipes, they could be a number of different uh, sort of uh, transfer mechanisms, if you will. So we could transfer gas from one volume to another volume. Now these pipes have a length, they have a diameter, the valves themselves have a flow coefficient based on the number of bends inside the pipe, based on the orifices and so on. So all of that is also calculated here. So when we have two gas volumes, such as the intake pipe, which connects us to the outside world, and the diesel room, there's a flow coefficient that's calculated based on how much the valve is open and other factors. This will allow us to equalize pressures and allow for very interesting gameplay. So for example, under normal operating conditions, you'd have the intake, outboard intake pipe completely open. Gas would then flow from the outside world into that pipe. And you would also open up the diesel room valve which will let air equalize into the diesel room. Well, you could actually have interesting gameplay where you could close this main diesel room pipe. So now the diesels have to suck air all the way from the other valve, which connects directly to the control room. So the outside world allows air to flow into the control room. And then if you have the doors open, it'll flow to the officer room, then officer room to the galley and then galley to the diesel room. There's some accounts and books you could read where this was done. You know, it creates a lot of fresh air flow through the boat, helps, uh, you know, remove some of the stinky air. But what happens when you close everything? You close all of the pipes and let's say you want to run your diesels underwater. 
But that's what I want to show today that we have some of that partially simulated. And I think it makes, again, for very interesting gameplay where the possibility space is opened up and we're not constricting players. We're just going to let the simulation system do its job. And then the outcomes of that will be part of the gameplay. So what I'll do right now is I will start the game with one atmosphere of pressure across the board. And then we'll have here at the bottom is our high pressure air system. So we have the diesel air flasks at 30 atmospheres and we'll start the game with everything closed. We'll turn on the starting air mechanisms. We'll start the diesel and then I will um, lower the pressure inside of the diesel room, closing all the valves and so on to see what would happen. All right, so here we are. We start a brand new game. You could see air is pretty equalized. Um, if I open up the diesel intake, you could see our valve here in the schematic opened up and it equalized the pressure between the intake pipe and the diesel room. So I'll go ahead and I'll close that. We could see that again in the schematic real time updates, helps us debug, makes it life easy. I'll open up the starting air manifold and we'll turn the diesels on. And you could immediately notice the pressure in the diesel room starts to fall as we're using moles of different types of, of gases in the room for combustion. And where it gets interesting is let's operate the diesel and we'll let it run at 50%. And I'll save you guys a bit of time. And what I'll do is I'll fast forward to when we start dropping to a much lower pressure to see what happens to the diesels. All right, so we're now down to 0.2 pressures of atmosphere. And you can see the diesel power just drop off considerably. And this thing is barely staying idle now. Again, each stroke of the diesel has a certain amount of volume that it sucks from the chamber. And at one point, combustion inside of the cylinder will be unsustainable. So let me artificially drop this down to 0.1 atmospheres. The thing is really struggling. Again, this is not the final simulation. There's quite a bit of tweaking we have left to do, but this gives you an idea of where we can drop the pressure down to where the diesels are essentially starved. So now we're inside of a chamber where there's essentially no pressure. Let me add a little bit more, half an atmosphere. So you can imagine the, the type of gameplay we envision here where uh, you have a player that's having a hard time uh, under hypoxia, essentially. Not enough oxygen and the effects that we can build into the simulation. So you could really feel, you know, when you're dived under and you're starting to run out of oxygen, you have too much carbon or your pressure drops because you did something silly such as ran the diesels for a bit. Um, you could really see the consequences of those choices. Then when you decide to let some of the high pressure air back into the chamber from the engine flasks, that of course would have an impact on the type of, of gas inside the chamber. So the moles of oxygen, carbon, etc., would be affected. All right, thank you for joining me today. Um, we continue working on these systems. This node-based setup allows us to, once we're done with the U-boat, create something very similar for any other vehicle, including, you know, the torpedo boats, the the bigger destroyers, and whatever other vehicles we'd like to, to put inside the game. They could all be essentially simulated using this system. And today I showed off the sort of uh, pneumatic simulation. This is really more the, the ambient air simulation here. In the future, I'll dive deeper into the electrical simulation as it's much more complex. You have, you know, you have distribution buses, you have fuses, you have lights, you have a lot more components interacting together. And under the hood, the way that's simulated is also quite a bit more sophisticated. But hopefully this was uh, an interesting preview for everybody just to see what we're about to, to push in terms of new features in the game. So if you're in the MMO, you decide to dive, uh, that will have an impact on the gas inside the diesel room and so on. The final addition that we're going to drop in before release will be the ability to integrate uh, the water simulation with the air simulation. So the outside world will actually start leaking in water if you dive with the open inlets. The water will make its way into the intake pipes. 
and then it'll start flooding the diesel room, for example. Um, and we want to have some rough visualization of the consequences of that. So we may have a very simple implementation of water uh, visualization here, where water level will slowly increase, which of course adds weights to the boat, adds weight to the boat, which makes the boat heavier, and you might get to a point where you can't surface it anymore. Right. Thank you. Till next time.